Hello, cinnamon bun. So I have a feeling that my opinions on this topic are gonna be controversial. To some, at least. So let's go. I'm ready. Fight me in the comments. I am planting my flag on the mountain here. Theme, 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 theme. Basically in this video, I'm gonna try and convince you that you shouldn't wait until after your story or after you've written your story or your first draft to think about theme. I think that we should think about theme as early in the writing process as possible. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna disagree with me, but hear me out. Okay, so let's like start with some background. So I think there's a lot of confusion out there about what theme is, um, about how you go about imbuing your stories with theme. Um, and I feel like in the last few years, I have gotten so much clarity around theme, about how you go about it, about how to do it, about the themes of my stories, about the way that the themes in other stories are expressed. A theme is not a single word or idea. Love is not a theme. War is not a theme. A theme is a declarative statement. It's a statement or a claim about the world. Um, in its smallest form, it's probably a sentence, um, but it might be as long as a paragraph for you to feel like you've truly, like you've properly expressed it. Like th that statement, that theme, that sentence can be about the topic of love, it could be about the topic of war, but love and war and other big amorphous concepts like that are not themes in themselves. The theme is the idea, the perspective that you're trying to prove in some sense with your story. You're trying to share it with people. You're kind of trying to convince the reader of it. And here's where I think I'm going to lose some people. I don't think that stories and critical essays are that different. Of course they're different, they're very different, but I think that they are similar in that both of them have a thesis and they both set out to prove or give evidence for or argue for that thesis. And just in the same way that it's much easier to write an essay when you decide what you're going to argue up front and then you base the essay around that, um, it's much easier to write a story with a cohesive theme if you think of that theme beforehand or during and then write the story around it. So I know that lots of people don't think about theme when they're writing at all. Um, I think a lot of people uh, probably think that you shouldn't think about theme, that it's just going to come out naturally and that it's not really for you to think about or consider, it's like something the reader takes away or it's all about interpretation. Um, I think that some people probably think about it in a more peripheral way, they think about certain ideas they might want to talk about but they maybe, they maybe don't define it in a really clear way as they're writing. And statistically, there are definitely writers out there who never consciously or super intensely think about the theme and stuff that they are going to convey um, or that they are aiming for and they still write incredibly deep, interesting, thoughtful, thought-provoking stories. But I don't think that we can assume that we're all like that. I don't think that we can all assume that we can all just write stories without thinking about theme and happen to get it right. I think most writers need to develop a basic understanding of theme and probably work on it and just think about it a little bit more. I'm going to try and illustrate what I mean with an example. Now, when it comes to any kind of art, um, and writing is an art and a craft at the same time, so it makes it complicated, there's definitely going to be elements of interpretation which you just can't control. You cannot control to some extent how people interpret your work um, and there's always going to be disagreement in interpretation. That much is true but I do think there are cases where it does seem like the author or the creator or the writer or the storyteller seems like or they're talking about having a particular vision for their work and that seems totally mismatched from what the majority of their audience or listeners or readers or watchers or whatever um, have taken away from it. And this comes from just never sitting down 
and taking a really hard look at what your theme is, deciding what it is, and um, looking at how it actually matches up with what happens in your story and what your story actually ends up conveying. Is that the same as what you wanted it to convey? And I would like to use the example of Gilmore Girls in this instance. Um, the ending, so Gilmore Girls obviously ran for seven seasons. Final season was not the original creator, Amy Sherman Palladino. Um, and for a long time, I, there was a certain subset of fans of the show who felt like they'd been cheated out of like the real ending of Gilmore Girls because um, Amy, Amy Sherman Palladino created it and she had a vision for the ending from the beginning and we never got that. Um, and so obviously um, in the last few years we had the Gilmore Girls Netflix return, um, A Year in the Life, in which um, Amy Sherman Palladino basically squeezed what was going to be her original last season into uh, four really long episodes um, and finished the series once and for all. Um, I enjoyed a lot of what happened in those episodes. I absolutely hated the ending. I thought it was so much less true to the series um, than the ending that was written by someone else, not Amy Sherman Palladino at the end of season seven. Um, I found it really disappointing. I found it really sad, tragic, kind of melancholy. Like it just seemed to suggest that like Nothing was going to change for any of the characters, everything, everyone kind of became their parents in a very depressing way. Um, and I'm not going to spoil it and things, but Rory's ending in particular upset a lot of people because she didn't get a happy ending. She got a very like putting her in her place kind of ending, which it didn't seem like we'd been building up for the whole time. And it kind of came out of nowhere for a lot of people. But Amy Sherman Palladino, in the wake of this kind of backlash, I suppose, was interviewed about it. And I read what she said about the ending and I was like, she has written something totally different than what she thinks she's written. Her intentions for the ending like I was kind of okay with, but that's not what I, what we actually got in the final product. It's just there was a total mismatch from like what she thought she'd written, what she had intended to do with the ending, and then what we actually got with the ending. And I really do think this is this does come from not fully understanding story structure and how endings basically confirm or solidify. Um, and make concrete your themes and um, no matter what you've been ex exploring thus far endings create your themes not thinking about those very clearly can lead you to places like this where there's a total mismatch between what you think you've written and how people actually react to it um, and I think yeah like I said there's a total scope for everyone is going to interpret everything differently to some extent but I think in cases like this where it's a very obvious like the majority, the vast majority of people who are invested in the story interpreted it in a certain way or in a certain school of thought and that way is totally different from what the author seemed to intend. I think that shows a bit of a mismatch. So let's talk about guess what you could do about that. So theme when it comes to the plot embryo is contained in the internal quadrants of the plot embryo and this is one of the reasons that I love the plot embryo so much because it really is an all-purpose tool to give you all the core elements of a story. It's not just about the plot points, it gets you thinking about the theme internally and then the world, the situations um, externally, and then it goes, it filters into the plot points. And you can't actually fully complete a plot embryo without thinking about theme because you have to fill in those internal quadrants as well because they they connect to everything else that happens. Um, and that's why one of my favourite ways to go about doing a plot embryo or starting one is to start with the middle and kind of work my way out. And because of this, I have done a lot of work with theme in the context of the plot embryo mainly, um, but just generally. Theme and kind of work around it and how it relates to the rest of the story, I've done a lot of it. And through that experience, I have come to the conclusion that theme is like an ingredient in a cake. It's not something you can add later after it's baked. So it needs to be in your recipe and it needs to go in along with everything else as you're mixing up the eggs and butter and flour and all that, if you wanna get into the metaphor. It permeates the whole rest of your story and so you can't just tack it on at the end. You can't just bake a cake without egg 
and then just crack an egg over the top of it. It's not the same. And I don't think that that means that your theme has to be really heavy handed. Um, I just think that like, if you're the magician, you need to understand the mechanics behind your illusion for the illusion to work for an audience. You need to understand how the mechanics work and then you can think about the flourishes and then you can think about how you're going to express it and perform it. I think people are really afraid to look theme in the eye because they're afraid that it's gonna take the magic out of it. Your theme should definitely be close to your heart. It should matter to you. It should feel like it has weight to you. And I think people are afraid to boil their theme down into a sentence or a paragraph because they feel like then it won't have weight, like it almost trivializes it. And I just don't think that's true. I think that you can take a theme and you can paste it over a picture of a landscape and post it on Instagram and it's gonna look like nothing and it becomes kind of a throwaway. But I think you can build a book around, or a story around that exact same theme and that's totally different. You will be taking the readers on a journey through which they get to experience that theme. They get to understand it fully. They get to deepen their understanding of it and they get to internalize it in this whole new magical way from just reading it on a piece of paper or on an Instagram post. Reading a theme, a sentence on a piece of paper is not the same thing as experiencing the whole journey of it in a story. Those are two totally different things. In a good story, a plot embryo is not just about what happens in the story to the characters. There's also kind of a plot embryo happening inside the reader at the same time. Reading a really good thought-provoking book should take the reader on their own journey. It should take them on a kind of plot embryo. It should help them realize things, see things in a new way, expand their mind. People change because of books. Books change people. That's what a plot embryo is. It's change. Um, like Scarlett Thomas's book Popco, I read when I was 17 and it made me turn vegan. I'm not anymore, let's not get into that. It's a different thing, but the point is, like, that story changed me. I underwent a kind of, I guess, like, a simplified version of a plot embryo because that book changed my mind about something, it changed my worldview. And I really think if you want to do that for other readers, if you want your book to do that, you need to do that on purpose. You need to know what you're trying to say. You need to know what you're trying to help them see. It's not just gonna happen by chance. Or if it does, it happens very rarely. Here's an example of a story where everyone knows the theme. It's basically like a catchphrase. And people still wanna experience that story. The existence of there being a t-shirt with the words, with great power comes great responsibility, doesn't diminish the story of Peter Parker, a Spider-Man. Reading with great power comes great responsibility on a t-shirt is not the same thing as following Peter's journey through losing Uncle Ben, his grief, learning to balance responsibility and power and how difficult that is. That story is not diminished by its theme being distilled into this one sentence that everyone knows. I just think if you want to convey things with stories, you need to freaking know what they are first. You need to know what you're trying to convey. And if you're not looking to convey anything with your story, then I don't know the reason that humans do stories is to share knowledge and emotion, things we've learned, about ourselves, about the world. We teach each other through stories. And I don't think that that, that saying that makes it any less profound. I don't think that being honest about the fact that it's about conveying ideas, it's about trying to show your point of view and maybe persuade people of your point of view. I don't think that diminishes the absolute power and importance and profound nature of what humans look to stories for, for and why we write them and all that kind of stuff. I'm getting a bit rambly now. So if I could urge you to do anything, it would be to commit. Think about what you want to talk about, what you want to share with the world and decide. Decide on a theme. Every story has only one. 
every subplot has its own theme. And I really think that if you do that, if you commit, if you decide, if you, as Holly Lyle calls it, if you nail your heart to the wall, you will be ahead of millions of other writers who don't think about theme until someone asks them, well, what's your story really about though? And they're like, they struggle to answer it. I'm not saying that deciding a theme isn't difficult. It absolutely is. Deciding what the point of this story is, is difficult but it's absolutely worth doing. And it really is just down to what is most important to you? What do you feel is most important to share? And yeah, just remember that you can always write a story with a, another theme. Like you're literally just deciding what you're saying with this story. And this story can't tell every story. This story can't share every piece of knowledge you've learned. So every new story, you get to think about a new theme. Stop shying away from looking your theme in the eye. Meet its gaze, stare it down, brainstorm it, pick it, treasure it, hold it close to your chest, write it on a piece of paper and burn it by moonlight. Let it be your compass, let it be your North Star, let it guide you when you forget why you're writing the thing. Let it remind you why you're telling this story, why it's important, why you want to share it with the world. Now let's fight in the comments, no biting, no hair pulling, but I'm putting my gloves on. As always, I'm Rachel Stephen, novelist, YouTuber, Woodland Helbitch. And if you'd like to brush up on your plotting or if you've enjoyed my plot and brave videos before, then please feel free to check out my free course, How to Plot on One Page. For a week, you get a daily video of 10 minutes or less, and it includes some of the most profound stuff that I have learned about plotting. That stuff isn't anywhere else on YouTube. And if you are stuck with any of your plot embryos, or your theme for instance, um, or your novel in general, then you can also get my help directly in a one-to-one -one novel navigation session. It doesn't matter where you are with your writing, sometimes every single writer could use an outside perspective, a mug full of enthusiasm, and some team brainstorming. So if you're interested, you can book a free 15-minute consultation. The links for that and the course will be down below. These videos are also supported by Patreon, so if you liked it and if you like more of kind of goodies and stuff from me or you would just like to you know like buy me a coffee or support my channel in some way and um, then please do head over to patreon and check out um the goodies and stuff that you can get there i'd appreciate it a lot and yeah thanks i hope you, some of you are on board with me on this one i feel very strongly about it as you might have been able to tell from this video i just think if we're not trying to say stuff with our stories then what's the fucking point of being here and writing? Let's say things. Let's respect ourselves enough to be honest about the fact that we have things to say and we're allowed to say them and we're allowed to want other people to get on board with them. Yeah? Cool. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Those are to, 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 to.